Hello, so this is Achala Bikruni. I'm from Dhammasara Monastery where I have lived since 2012. Uh, I've been a Bikruni for five years. In June this year, I came over to Santi Forest Monastery, which is in New South Wales, and I'll be here for a little while. The community at Santi were invited to participate in this Metta retreat by doing some guided meditations um, and the retreat is being organized on the occasion of Ajahn Brahm's 70th birthday. I think when I heard about this retreat I thought that it's a wonderful way to show gratitude towards our teacher. It might seem like a, a rather vague and perhaps intangible kind of gift just to wish someone well and send them metta or loving kindness on their birthday. But what we are also actually doing is we're taking some time to set aside our usual duties and activities and to develop our minds in a wholesome way. We're putting into practice the Buddha's teachings, which Ajahn Brahm has been so tirelessly explaining to us for all these years. So I think it's it's a very nice and it's a very sweet kind of gift just to offer up our practice um, as a way of showing our gratitude. I think I've heard Ajahn Brahm say that when people asked Lumpo Cha how can they repay their debt of gratitude that they have towards him and Lumpo Cha said that you can't. The only way you can repay your teachers is by practicing and then helping others in the same way that our teachers have helped us, by paying it forward. So it's very natural to feel gratitude and metta towards people who have helped us. And I know that Ajahn Brahm has helped many, many people in big and small ways. In some cases, he has literally saved their lives. Um, personally, I have a lot of gratitude towards him just for the opportunity to live this monastic life, you know. The, the facilities and the very conducive situation that the nuns have at Dhammasara, he's had a lot to do with that and I think we all feel, um, we all feel grateful towards him for that. Apart from providing the material conditions, he's also just a very inspiring example to anyone who wants to live monastic life. Um, he's lived his monastic life very well, I feel, and it's rare to have such examples in the world now. So the best way to show our gratitude is, is not to give him more what condensed milk or mushy peas, um, but just to put practice and put, put the advice of our teachers into action. And that's what all of you are doing, um, either by helping to organize the retreat, by participating in it, or by doing these guiding medita guided meditations. We are coming together as a community and supporting each other as well as sending metta to Ajahn Brahm. <clears throat> Ajahn Brahm has been a monk for longer than I have been alive, which is in itself very impressive. And he has many, many good qualities. Uh, but I thought I would just talk a little bit about two qualities that I guess I appreciate and can relate to a lot. Uh, one is his sense of humor, um, which is at times very appalling, <laughs> but I still appreciate it. And the other is his peacefulness. So the, the kind of light-hearted and very casual style 
that he has, it always puts everybody at ease. It just makes you feel like, oh, it's okay. You know? um, and I remember the first time that I listened to him was when he came to Monash University to speak. And I don't really actually remember very much of what he said. But I do remember feeling incredibly peaceful and happy. And that sense of peace left a very, very strong impression on my mind. Um, and it's this peacefulness that he can share with those who meet him that's really a very great gift. Um, personally, it is something that has sustained and nourished my monastic life um, over these past nine years now that I have lived in Perth. Um, it's why whenever I have the opportunity to go to Bodhinyana to listen to him speak to the monks and nuns, I, I always try to go on those trips. Sometimes when I'm busy or tired, these trips to Bodhinyana are the most peaceful time for me. They always just bring, not always, but often bring a lot of... Um, just energy and brightness back to the mind, which can just get tired and dull just through busyness, I guess. Finally, before we start the guided meditation, um, I thought I would take a little bit of time to talk about metta or loving kindness. Although I don't live with Ajahn Brahm, I've had the chance now to observe him from a distance, but you know, still. You get a feel for how he runs the monastery and how he deals with all the various situations. And I've often been surprised at how much he doesn't try to control things, especially when I first ordained. I was like, why doesn't he do something about that, you know? That needs to be fixed. But he doesn't really try to run the monastery. He doesn't really seem to try to fix things or change people. He is very, very accepting of people and of situations. These two qualities, acceptance and metta, are very close. Um, when we truly love somebody or we have genuine love for ourselves or a situation, we accept it. You know, we don't try to change that person, we don't try to change ourselves. We just accept it. That's what metta is, I think. Um, so when someone has a lot of metta, they will naturally be very accepting of other people. And metta is a quality, it helps to settle things. Someone with a mind of metta will naturally be very soft and they will be hard to upset. The Buddha did teach that there are many benefits of metta meditation, um, some of which are that you go to sleep well and you wake up happy, you become dear and pleasing to all beings. Um, but I think if you cultivate it as a habit, then it's there when you need it. It can be something that helps to sort of soothe the irritations that disturb the mind and it helps us develop a still and peaceful mind. I guess why I wanted to focus on acceptance and metta is that I think that it's actually really hard to do, to just accept situations and in particular to accept ourselves. I don't know many people who think that they are perfect as they are <laughs> um, and that feel really good about themselves. I don't know why that is but that just seems to be how people are these days, you know. Uh, we all have things about ourselves that we don't like uh, or that are difficult experiences that we have had that we wish we didn't have or things that we have done that we wish we hadn't. You know, we all think we're either too tall, too short, too fat, my nose is too big, my ears stick out too much, um, I'm too loud, I'm not smart enough, I'm not 
good enough at dancing, which is a problem monastics don't have. Um, but I think that when we cultivate metta towards ourselves, this can lead us to be much more accepting of ourselves and then also of other people. Um, that's why I, I wanted to focus on that particular kind of angle on metta, I guess, for the guided meditation. So now I will begin the guided meditation. Um, so if we take a few moments to just relax the body and just notice our posture. Can you feel your feet on the ground? Can you feel your legs and your back, your arms, your shoulders, your neck and your head? Just take a few moments to relax and notice your posture make any adjustments if needed So let's take a few deep breaths to settle ourselves into the present. Let's start by just taking stock of where we're at and how we're feeling. Do we feel happy and content right now? Do we feel relaxed? Do we feel restless and agitated? Do we feel like the retreat's not going well so far? I spent the whole time thinking about my kids at home or the work that I need to do back at the office. Or I'm feeling irritated at all these other retreatants. I feel frustrated because I'm trying to meditate at home and the dog keeps barking. Whatever you're feeling is okay. Whether you're happy or sad, peaceful or restless, it's okay. Whether you think you're a hopeless meditator, or a useless Buddhist, or you're a failure generally at life, or you don't like something about yourself, you 
you don't like that you can't sit on the floor, you don't like your voice but you have to do these guided meditations. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's okay. You are more than good enough and this moment is more than good enough. Just be happy to be me and happy to be here. Happy to be me and happy to be here. If that mantra doesn't work, you can just try, may I be well and happy. So whatever you are experiencing is okay. If you're feeling tired, if you're feeling angry, if you feel like running away from the retreat, you're feeling frustrated, all of that is accepted. As Ajahn Brahm would say, very good, carry on. Just be happy to be me and happy to be here. Happy to be me, happy to be here. There's nothing to do, and there's nowhere to go. There's nothing that's required of me. I don't have to be anybody other than I am.
however we are right now, is more than good enough. So we can continue using this mantra or any other mantra that works for you or if you have the feeling of metta already you can just focus on that. So I will be quiet now for the next 20 minutes.
So as we come to the end of the meditation, we can take a few moments to review what worked and also how are we feeling now? Do we feel more relaxed than before or are we more stressed out? Do we feel content? Are we, do we feel frust frustrated? Is our mind more still and bright? Whatever our experience is, it's fine. It's okay. So we can also send this feeling of warmth and of acceptance that we've cultivated. We can send it out towards our friends, our family, our fellow retreatants at Jana Grove in Perth and around the world. And we can also especially send it towards Ajahn Brahm. You can either picture him sitting in the monastery at Bodhinyana or if you know roughly the direction that he's in from where you are, you can send it out towards him. But just wish him well. We wish him good health and long life and happiness. And whatever merits that we have gained from doing this meditation together, which is basically the happiness in our heart, we share this merit with Ajahn Brahm and with each other and with all beings. So we can wish all beings in Perth, across Australia and across the whole world. May all beings be well and happy. May all beings be free from suffering. I will now ring the gong three times to mark the end of this guided meditation.